Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. I am back with our second day of our Winter Bible Journaling Camp 2020. So, I have already had amazing emails, amazing pictures sent my way. I want to thank you guys. You do know, you do not know how much of an encouragement that is for me. Um, I really didn't feel very well yesterday. I was still pretty, um, just puny. But, you know, like us moms, we just press on, take care of the kids, and it's all good. And by afternoon, I was fine, I, so I really think it was just a mean round of food poisoning. Um, and ironically, I think it was from a tea. I know. And my husband asked me, he goes, how in the world did you get sick from a tea or a coffee? And I said, you had food poisoning from coffee. Do you not remember? That's why you don't drink coffee anymore. So, <laughs> But it's not going to kill me to stop drinking tea. I'm going to tell you right now. I love tea, so I'll keep drinking it. But thank you guys. So many of you prayed for me. You sent me encouragements. And I just wanted, wanted to let you guys know how much I genuinely, genuinely appreciate your prayers. And I genuinely appreciate the prayers for my family. And you guys have been amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so today I said I would come back and we would go to the next part. So I'm going to pray and then I'm going to share some things with you. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you so, so much for today, Lord. And I pray that everyone that is in the camp today has as beautiful day as I've had so far. And I thank you for time at home. Thank you for time for me to just gather my thoughts, for me to work on on the camp and to start, you know, applying and, and sifting through my notes. And God, I just, I praise you for that. Lord, I praise you for the sunshine. The sun is out, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, um, we know that you have a plan for all the different things that are going on in each one of our lives. And right now, as we come together, I pray, God, that we can push everything to the side that we all have. Um, the bills that need to be paid or the the struggles or even just the I can't wait right now so that we can just focus on you. Help us to focus on you, God, and your design for this class and for each one of us as we make these journals as basically a love letter to you. And God, I thought a lot about that um, last night. And yes, it's a place for us to record our, our life with you, but it's also our love letter to you. And we praise and love you, Jesus. Lord, um, let my words be your words. Help all of us to... Um, uh, focus and and just just be in that moment to meditate on you. Thank you, God, for the sponsors for this. Thank you for all the encouragement among the campers. Thank you for campers praying for campers. What an amazing opportunity to see your love in action through all these ama amazing people, God. We love you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. So, I took that long to look at comments this morning because I realized as I was answering emails yesterday evening because so many of you sent me um, messages via Instagram and emails and, um, oh goodness, um, uh, uh, sorry, my phone just went off and I'm getting ready to turn that off because... Um, my husband was going to call me back and he did not and I want to make sure that I'm with you guys again to focus so some of you sent me a message messages and pictures via Instagram messages and pictures via email and then some of you left comments and it dawned on me this morning that I hadn't checked the comments and I'm so sorry so I went and checked the comments and guys I love when you guys are encouraging each other and you have tips to help each other and Oh my goodness. I mean, I just sat there and just thought, oh Lord, thank you so, so much. So God is at work. That's all I can say. And um, what Satan meant for, you know, evil and me getting sick and not be able to get started and we were waiting on things. God is doing all things for good for those who love him. And we love him. And we are so thankful. I'm going to move my candle out of the way since I forgot to light it. But that's no big deal because we are together. And um, 
<clears throat> I am going to share with you. So here's the journal I'm working in with you guys. And here's my little journal. So you're going to go, well, why aren't you working in this? Because I feel like I want to save these for anybody else who comes along. So I've even had people email me and say, hey, or leave me a message and say, hey, you know, I didn't, did I not make the cut? It was like, of course, you know, if you got to me in time, you did. There was one person who sent me a message, not by email, and I could not find where in social media she had sent me something. And I apologize. Life is very hairy for me because of kids living in different towns and different things going on. And um, anyways, so, and I'm just going to say her first name, Cheryl, if you are listening to this, I will put together a kit for you and I will send it. I held some things back. It may not be a complete kit, but I'm going to, I, I, I did the first come first serve who sent me an email to josephinesdesigns.com at gmail.com. It is in the information below and in the about section of this channel. So please, 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 please don't leave it in comments. Don't message me by Instagram. Don't message me, you know, in other ways other social media, please, please, please always send me an email and put in the subject line Winter Bible Journaling Camp, your name and your address and what if you want a kit. That is something that, and your address, mailing address. So, um, and you guys have already started signing up for spring and summer camps. I'm thrilled. The file's been made. Everybody, I try to answer everybody's email. I've filed everybody's email. If I don't answer your email, Go back to your scent, double check, make sure I didn't answer it because you'll show up usually in your scent as well. Um, I try to answer everyone's email. So, and I'll say something like, you're in, and yeah, you're in, or, you know, something like that. So, just a little bit of housekeeping. I wanted to get that done first. So, um, but Cheryl, if you hear my voice, please, 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 if you're watching this video, please, please, please email me, and I have if not a whole kit, at least a partial kit. Um, and my friend Lisa, who messaged me, I did mail you a kit, and I answered you as well. So, okay, friends. So this is the one we're working out of. This is the one I'm working ahead in. The only thing I'm not going to do is I will show you my outline in here, but I will save my journaling for another day. I'm, You know, the private stuff. So I hope you're okay with that. And the reason I chose this was, yes, I wanted to save... I don't need that. I can take that out. <laughs> I don't need, um, I don't want to waste the extra journals because I, you know, I'm trying to give everything as much back out. Um, and I love Happy Planner. So I use it in a lot of my By the Well for God now. I mean, I am like, I'm the Happy Planner girl because I love the ease of taking it in and out and just all that good stuff. So this is my yesterday spread. And I wanted to share with you what I did. So remember I said, bring your own stuff in, shush it up, do what you want, etc. Well, I've got a set of paints that I have just recently bought. They're the Gauche paints. I got them from By the Well for God. I've been cleaning in here. If you were in here, you'd be like standing up and saying, yay. But anyway, so I've been cleaning in here because I couldn't find them. And I thought I had specifically set those out. So, because I've been traveling so much, I'm thinking they may be in one of my bags that I've been traveling with, but I will find those. So, I decided since I couldn't find my paints, because I wanted to paint and then put things down, I used some of the By the Well for God tissue, and I just have stockpiles of it. And she has one massive sheet that she rolls everything up in, and then she sends it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lori and her team at By the Well for God. So, they also help sponsor this camp, this camp as well, as as I think almost every camp, at least in the last, I don't know, a couple of camps. She's so amazing. So, um, but anyway, so I, I had plenty of this, so I thought, well, why don't I just start playing with it? And then, of course, you know, I just tore my edges, because you know I love to tear edges. I love that junk journal. I love making junk journals. I love that feel. But I love the ease of my happy planner. So I put my little heart here, and this was the other kit I had to, to kind of mess with. And I tried to take the separate kit of just what's left over. If I only have X amount of these, then I don't keep one. I give you guys them. And we have extras of everything, extra hearts, extra of the snowflakes, extra, extra stickers, things like that. So I can totally make it work. 
and I decided to pull some of my stash in. So I just used some of my ink. I used the um, Postbox Red and the um, Funky Fuchsia, which is really kind of a harsh pink. It's not really fuchsia. It's not truly that color, or at least it didn't come off that color. And I just, you know, inked my edges. Yes, and I'm so lazy. I just didn't even use a dauber. I just went straight with the ink pad. I mean, I'm lazy. I know. But anyways, <laughs> it's really a time thing, I have to tell you. But, um, and then I just did washi underneath. So I had stacks of washi on my desk from, or on the table from um, planning. So I just grabbed these. You know, we're Valentine week. This is all about love. So, of course, I love the rose gold hearts. I'd already used these in another, and I can't, uh, this is from my, uh, uh, pardon me, Hobby Lobby. This, I think, is from Joann's, like their inexpensive bin, and I think this is either Walmart or Joann's, but, um, like I said, I had a lot of this stuff in my stash, so I just pulled from what I had, and then I threw a little sticker down, and we're done. So, I have decided for today's lesson, dun da da, -da we're going to use this little cut apart, and then we're going to break it down and use some of our colored pens. If you do not have colored pens, you do not need to worry because I have an option. So I've already kind of set up the page and then I'll go from there. Now, the other reason I use this is because this is where I write all my notes. So, um, for our camp. So I am so excited about today. Okay, you guys all know I'm a teacher by profession, right? Okay, nothing new there under the sun. Well, there goes some of my washi. I didn't really plan this very well. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was just so excited today. Um, I, um, I love taking scripture and going through and looking at the words in the scripture. So, I want to kind of briefly go back into um, the definition of love. So, while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. You can tear this out, you can use your trimmer, you can punch this out if you have a big enough punch that fits, like you can make this into a tag. You could put this on a tag if you have a tag in your stash, or if you know how to make a tag, it's super easy. Cut a rectangle and cut the, the two ends off, and you're done. If you want it perfect, cut one, flip it over, cut the other one, it'll match. So, um, all right, save this in your, um, in your little, um, storage, however you're going to store your goodies for the um, camp. And by the way, I love, um, I got a picture from my friend Tracy, our good friend here on the, on the channel, and she um, showed me her storage setup. So, just so you can see, my storage setup is exactly the same. I just added these little pop dots, so, or, you know, little pop-ups. So, I am going to go ahead and pull that out so you guys can see. So now for today, I decided that since we're talking about love, I'm going to use heart stickers. So I'm going to pull that out. Now, put this back out of the way so you guys can see. All right. Now, this, I thought, you know, you could use your hearts and, you know, print out words. You could put them on it. There's all kinds of things you can do. You can use these hearts. I mean, you could use one big heart you could use one of these and write each word however you want to do it and see here's that tag shape again so you could literally cut this and go that way and actually that's kind of cute maybe that's what we'll do today let's do it why not quit talking about the tag and get busy all right so anyways okay friends and then you have all kinds of little cut out hearts so you can use whatever you want I do not want you to feel like you have to do what I'm doing. So, all right, now, I'm going to scoot my little thing over here to the side. I've got my pens, and I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the definition of love. So, I want to reiterate what we talked about yesterday about memorizing 1 Corinthians 13. If you are in for the challenge, please leave a comment below. Say, I'm in. And we all know what that means. I'm in for the memorization. I'm in for Corinthians 13. And if you think about it, our camp is 20 days. We've already spent one day. So we have 19 days left. If you learned a verse a day, 
And these are basic verses. Love is patient. Love is kind. You know, all of that. So be thinking that through. Think through how would that work for you. So there's that. Now I want to go through the definitions. So online there are two kinds of definitions. So it's a noun and a verb. That's how it can be used. Now it can be made into an adverb. It can be made into an, you know, there's different ways you can use the root word. But we're going to focus on the root word. So, um, okay, an intense feeling or deep affection. Like babies feel, uh, uh, feel parents with a feeling of love. Babies feel parents with a feeling, with feelings of love. Sorry, my handwriting's horrible here. So, um, and then the second one is a great interest and pleasure in something. His love for football. So there you go. Then the other way it can be used as, as a verb. The feeling of romantic. Being in love with your husband, your children, your puppy. You know, I mean, you know, because people love their critters. You know, that kind of a thing. And I mean, I loved um before we had children we had six dogs we had two cats two birds and yeah it was really yeah critters i get it i get it i've had about every critter except for reptiles i draw the line there draw the line so anyways <laughs> i live in texas where you know rattlers aren't fun etc so anyway so what i wanted to say was today um i wanted to challenge you to um look up the word love. Now, I highly recommend, if you go online, look at the Merriam-Webster's definitions. Now, it is very complete. So, I'm just going to briefly go over some of my notes. It's a strong definition, uh, a strong definition for another arising out of kinship or personal, um, uh, or personal. So, um, natural love for a child. Two, attraction based on, and it talks about the more worldly, like a sexual desire. Three, affection based on admiration, benevolence, or common interest. Love for his old schoolmates. That's an example. Um, let's see. Four, an assurance of affection. Give her, all, give her my love. That's an example. So, the second type of noun definition is warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion. The love of the sea. I have that. Love of the sea. Okay, three. The object of attachment, devotion, or admiration, like baseball, was his love. Um, a beloved person. Um, and, and it's often used as a term of endearment. So, um, British use as an informal term or address, like, hello, love. You know, um, I have a niece that I call Lovey. I call her, when I talk to him, I'm like, hi, lovey, how you doing? And I I just started calling her that, and it just stuck. So, anyway, so for an unselfish, lo uh, loyal, so benevolent, so concerned for the good of another, such as the faithfully, uh, uh, the fatherly love of God for humankind, and a brotherly concern for others, so an unselfish, loyal, um, and benevolent love. So, um... Let's see. And I and I will give you an example of that. My students, when I taught in a classroom, I would call them my children. They were my kiddos. And um, because I loved them. And it was just, it was a natural, um, you know, concern, care, benevolent love. Because, you know, just, you, you just can't help when you become best friends with somebody. You love them because, you know, we're great friends. So it's kind of that kind of, of, a, of a love. Um, and a person's adoration of God, that's another, you know, another type of affection or benevolent love. Um, there is a type of love, it is for a God, lowercase g, and sure enough, my sweet husband's um, calling me right now, so I will text him, I can't talk right now. Um, don't you love that quick texting, sorry. Um, such, so a lowercase g, such as Cupid or Eros, or personification of love. Um, the number six version of that in the noun is an amorous episode, a love affair. Seven, we already talked about this, the, the physical type of love. Number eight, um, to score a score in tennis. I totally forgot about that. That's why I love Webster's, uh, Merriam Webster's. Um, and then nine, capitalized Christian science, and they use that God. I, I didn't quite understand that, but anyways, um, let's see. Let's see, so an aversive uh, use of this is at love, that's a holding one's opponent scoreless in tennis. 
so that's where the love comes in. It's account zero. And in love, inspired by affection. Um, and I didn't put an in there. I know. Where's my pencil? Okay, i got to fix it. Sorry, guys. Um, I spired. <laughs> okay. It's not very neat, but that's okay. So, love. A verb of this in the Webster's Merriam Dictionary is to hold dear, cherish. I love that. Um, the second example is to feel a lover's passion, devotion, or tenderness for. Um, the, uh, some examples of that are a caress, um, and then an amorous type of uh, interaction. We'll leave the rest there. Okay, to like, number three is to like or desire actively. Take pleasure in, loved to play the violin. I loved to play the flute and piano and handbells and all the different instruments I loved playing. Um, to thrive in, the roses love sunshine. I love, these examples are fantastic. So, I also wanted to bring out, if you get an opportunity, if you have not read this, and please excuse my notes, I'm not putting them here to show you. I guess I should put them back up here because they really are ready. Um, so, there are, there's a book by a gentleman by the name of Gary Chapman. We were very blessed to get to see him in person and get to talk and interact with him. He came to a homeschooling camp years and years and years and years and years ago. So, um, it was really, it, he didn't get to stay for the whole week, but we did get to interact with him. And that was such a blessing because, you know, um, my sweet husband um, doesn't always like getting into the psychology of things. And so I, I think there's a lot of value in that, but I also believe in God's logic. So I can see where man's logic could maybe get in the way and I get where he's at. But Gary Chapman broke down five ways for us that, that, that are our love languages. So I, that is my teaser for tomorrow. Come back for the five love languages. Now, um, there are also five to six there were and I only knew five but then there was an extra on of the words in Greek for love we're going to cover that not yet but I just kind of want to put that little hook in there for the future so um those are great um places for us to um take scripture and go a little bit deeper so, I just wanted us to look at the definition, pure and simple, of love. So, I'm not going to tell you which of, of the examples I gave that I looked up, or the examples of definitions. I would love for you to go look up in a typical dictionary. It can be online, it could be on your shelf, it could be anywhere you want, um, that you have a dictionary, and find a very... A dictionary definition that you are really um, akin to that you really favor and I would love for you to put a definition of the noun usage of love and the verb usage of love because I think it's interesting it's a word that is not just something that it can be described it's it's an object it's something you know it's a noun you know, person, place, or thing. There you go. There's your nouns. But it is also a verb. It is an action word. So I think that is really interesting. So I wanted to bring that out first before we dig too much into scripture because I want us to better understand man's definition of love. Then we're going to get into God's definition of love and that is going to be so good. And I think I may do the Greek first because I really love that. We learned that in church as a young girl and I really, really loved that. So, all right, so let's get our tags out and, or if you don't want to use your tag, you use what you want in that kit. Um, but I am going to use my tag now. Um, and I am going to use some of these um, foam and again, I got these at the Dollar Tree, and I think I got these like in the car section or something. I don't think it was in the craft section, at least at my um, Dollar General. So, um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this down. So let me get past my notes. <laughs> Let me move everything around. And I'm sorry I have the TV on in the other room. Um, this is a very, okay, so this would be an example of love. <laughs> when I was a little girl, I loved a TV show. And I even went to like a fashion show with a little girl. Um, and it was a family affair. 
And because we had so many children that my mom would bring home from, you know, because she taught special ed in a um, hospital, or adjacent to a hospital, um, in a public school, she, and you know I'm going to tear this because I just love tearing, um, she literally would bring children home and we'd have extra kids in our bed. And you know what? It was it was great. I mean, as a result, my first babysitting job was for a, a family friend whose little um, little girl had cerebral palsy, and I hated that she had cerebral palsy. But I look back on that and think, what an honor to have babysat for them, and um, and what a blessing. So, um, anyways, I um, there was a TV show called Family Affair, and it was about a family that the mother daddy passed away, unfortunately, and there were three children. And they kind of had this, you know, hard start trying to find somewhere they could stay or, you know, be with who they could be with. And um, and I'm just doing a little bit of a crease because I love that flare up. I know it's going to go flat when I do it, but that's okay. Um, and I'm going to get my red ink out. So if you don't have red ink, let me, matter of fact, forget the red ink, I will use a marker because I love you guys. So if you don't have ink, let me just show you how you can just do your edges with a marker. And you don't even have to have a brush tip, and I'll show you that. Anyways, and um, so one of the, the children in it, her name is Buffy. Um, she came to our town, and there was a modeling thing at the, at the mall, and my mom bought me one of her dress designs. There was, they did dresses that were inspired by her. And, um, I remember being so proud of that dress as a little girl. I just thought it was so special. And, um, anyway, so long story short, um, unfortunately she, you know, had a, a bit of a rough end, but, you know, in the end, I, I just, there's such a simplicity about the show and I enjoy it. So I turn it on. We don't have cable, but we have something called decades. And so I'm a, it, there's like old, old TV shows on it. And, um, you know, I mean, they're not all like what I watch, but when I'm here by myself, I've said this before because I've been on video before and there's been noises in the house and, um, I'm getting to where we leave the gate open more which is a big deal on our property. We used to never leave the gate open. And so I'm trying to do, um, trying to do that. Um, and it makes it so much easier because of my hands when I have to go like into town and I'll be going into town in a little bit. So that's what's on. And I think it's Mary Tyler Moore or something just came on. At least that's the music I thought I heard. So if you hear that, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But there's a reason. There is a reason, I promise you. Okay, so this is the first time I haven't seen them tear completely apart. But that's all right. It's all good. We will make it work. So I am just going to go like this. And I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to go like this. And maybe that's too much, but you know. You know me. Got to overdo it. But anyway. <laughs> You don't have to overdo it. You could literally take one of these squares and cut it th down three times. And it would be totally fine. And even four times if you want to do all four corners. Um, almost, ooh, I almost did that. I did it upside down, but that's all right. We are going to stay with it. So, okay. I love that. I love the dimension. I love the color. I love the texture. I love all that. So, just an example. I will go back and show you what I did. You can do this however you want. I stopped at angered. So I got all the way to here. Is is not easily angered. And then I'm going to go back in and write the definition. There you go. So I will look up proud and then I will put not in front of it. And so that's what that sign means. You know, the zero with the slash means not or no. And I put not easily angered, not dishonor others, not boast. So I think that is um, fun. And I will take the rest of this page and I'll put more over here. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You can do it however you like. You could list it and it might fit better. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm going to list it. So I have my pins. I'm just gonna, I pulled out the colors I thought that worked for this kit. I'm gonna have them in my little container there. But if you just have the pencil, use the pencil. If you have the pen from one of the previous kits, use that or use a fantastic black pen. I have been tremendously um, enjoying um